Trying to get your friend into anime whose only familiarity is a couple kid shows from the 90s is an experience that nearly every anime fan will have at some point in their life. And without a doubt, anytime this topic is brought up in anime communities, there are going to be a couple of repeat answers that people feel do the job better than any other. Almost every single time, without fail, the highest rated comment is going to be a recommendation of Death Note. This is an anime that premiered in 2006 and yet continues to top the Mal popularity ranking above the likes of My Hero Academia, Sword Art Online, One Punch Man, and even Attack on Titan. Death Note boasts the perfect blend of mainstream pop appeal and truly genius creative storytelling. Its ability to tap into the hearts and minds of new fans is a testament to the way the anime challenges expectations and transcends some of its contemporaries. In order to accomplish the things it does, Death Note has the hurdle of needing a perfect introduction. In the short instant of one's attention span, the story needs to prove itself as something extraordinary. This hurdle is not necessarily something unique to Death Note, but the excellence with which it accomplishes it is nothing short of brilliant. My name is Hoodie Song, this is Kato, and today I want to talk about the genius of Death Note's first episode. But before we get into that, this video is brought to you by the Kato Anthology. We are currently in the last 24 hours of our very first Kickstarter to help fund a limited print run of our new book. The Kato Anthology is a collection of 10 short comics that have been created by the viewers of this channel, and we managed to reach our funding goal in only 36 hours. This book is a celebration of storytelling, passion, and most importantly, our community. It's stories for you guys, by you guys, and it's an honor to see it be so successful so quickly. Because of all your generous support, we've surpassed stretch goals for free additional art prints and a pair of Kato themed chess pieces for every backer receiving a physical reward. Check out the link in the description for more details and consider pledging to get a copy of the book. The bigger the success this is, the more chances we get to do awesome projects like this in the future. Alright, now back to the video. There are very few anime as immediately electrifying and addictive as Death Note. A large part of that is in its very first moments. The first episode opens up in the desolate world of Shinigami as Ryuk looks among his idling peers, struck with the stale boredom of monotony. Immediately, we contrast that with Light, sitting in a classroom of students half paying attention. He side-eyes them in contempt before reading a passage about the blessings of following God. In just two short scenes, so many small details establish the tone and stakes of the story. In the world of Death Note, a realm of supernatural beings like the Shinigami exist, and in the realm of humans, an intelligent boy mirrors the actions of the previous Ryuk. Immediately we know these two characters are connected in some way. The passage of God allows one to infer some possible dynamics the story can explore. It's a passage that asks the reader to submit to higher authority, to a god that can lead them to better places. This in tandem with the look of contempt brimming in Light's eyes subtly clues the viewer into the character's trajectory. Light Yagami is a boy who looks down upon his peers. He sees himself above the minutia of their dull lives. This is perfectly emphasized in music with the slow gospel choir singing in the background. Immediately, the story is hitting hard on these motifs of God or a higher power. In the next scene, we watch Light on his walk home from school. A screen the size of a building blasts out the horrific descriptions of brutal killings that occurred recently. This isn't just some small news broadcast Light personally listens to in his earphones. If that were the case, it might give the impression that Light has fringe interests. It would establish Light's political awareness, but as if that were something kept to himself. Instead, the broadcast is a massive program being telecasted publicly to a busy city street. The issue of this story pertains to society at large. In the first two scenes, we establish details of the characters, and in the following moments, we learn motivation. The world is rotten, says Ryuk in Light. Savage murders occur on the daily, and the people have become desensitized to it, casually making their commutes home as if nothing was wrong. In less than four minutes, everything you need to know about Light Yagami and his plight with mankind is there for an attentive viewer to latch onto. Before the Death Note even falls from the sky, we know this story is about a boy in a crooked world. He's above his fellow peers, capable of leading the masses to a more just society. The aesthetic allusions to God, the Shinigami, it all lays out on the table where light will go, the God complex he'll develop, and the supernatural layer to the story that can get him there. With stakes and character established, the major things left are conflict and tone. We know that the supernatural exists in this world, but how will that fact be used to empower our main character? This is a particularly crucial question considering the nature with which Death Note was published, as part of the Shonen Jump lineup. Now, as fans of Death Note, we both know this is far from a battle shonen, but how does the story establish that? When the Death Note falls from the sky, we get our first hint. It's not a sword, it's not a dagger, a gun, or an abstract spiritual energy. 
It's a notebook. Not only that, it's a notebook with a set of incredibly specific rules to how it can operate. Immediately, the idea of this being a battle shonen is thrown out the window. Every bit of tonal indication has clued us into knowing that the story will be more cerebral or intellect-based. In the existence of a tightly constrained set of rules for a simple notebook hints at the larger puzzle-solving side to the story. One of my favorite sections of this anime is the elaborate, climactic set piece that involves Light manipulating and abusing the rules of the notebook to their fullest extent. This sequence of actions in which Light forfeits the Death Note to lose his memories, thus clear suspicion of being Kira, is, in a show full of genius moments, still one of the most awe-inspiring feats of intelligence. At least, in my opinion. And while that rule of being able to lose one's memories is introduced in the first episode, what this really pays off is the establishing setup of the show as one being about cleverness and puzzle solving. The reason this moment, and moments like it, last so strongly in my brain over a decade after seeing the show is because they're fulfillments of early narrative expectations. In Save the Cat, they call this the fun and game section, or the promise of the premise. Basically, a third of the way through your story, you're delivering on all of the things one would want going into the end anime, things that would probably be cut into a trailer. In this case, it's delivering on that cat and mouse dynamic we all know of Death Note, and seeing Light use his intelligence to his fullest extent to twist the situation in his favor. It's not that this is the best part of the story, but it often can be some of the most exciting. And that premise is being established in this very first episode with just the simple introduction of a set of unique rules in a notebook. So with 8 minutes of the first episode through, and already such efficient methods to nail down the premise and trajectory of this story, what does Death Note do with the remaining 66% of the episode's runtime? What I think any aspiring writer should learn from this first episode is an emphasis on character. All of the stuff previously mentioned is vital and great, but the last two thirds of episode one is what really sells this anime for me. It highlights the importance of making your protagonist interesting, and someone that we want to follow in their adventure. The next minutes of the anime are used to solidify the authenticity of the notebook, but it does so in a way that gives a lot of insight into who Light is as a character. When Light decides that the Death Note needs to be tested a second time, his first reaction is to use it against a bully in his class. But more importantly is the reason that he doesn't. Light spares the bully not because of some theoretical act of mercy, but only in fear of how killing someone connected to him could get him caught. This tells us a couple things. At a surface glance, it shows Light's foresight. He's the type of kid who doesn't do things on an impulse and really considers the long-term results of his actions. This will be important in a protagonist for a clever thriller. But it also tells us that Light is maybe a bit darker than the average person. He doesn't immediately jump to regret and fear in the way that we would. His practicality supersedes the normal empathy one might have before taking a life. One of the best pieces of advice I got when it comes to writing a series is to think about your first episode or chapter as its own mini, complete story. Within the span of one episode, your viewer should have felt every rise and fall one would expect over the course of the series, but truncated down to the runtime of only 22 minutes. This does a lot of things. It hammers in that idea of conveying the proper tone and direction of your story, it communicates to the viewer that they can trust you to handle a full narrative and that you won't just flop part of the story out of ineptitude, and it also gives them a taste of that satisfaction one gets when they finish a great show. That taste is addictive and will keep them coming back for more. This isn't universally the case, but oftentimes what this means practically is giving your protagonist a small arc that can be established and resolved in just the single episode. Death Note does this perfectly. A helpful way of thinking about this is through the lens of the hero's journey. The hero's journey is an analysis by James Campbell that breaks down the 17 stages commonly repeated throughout myths of history. It's become a rubric of sorts and can be seen within the structure of so many modern stories like Harry Potter, Avatar The Last Airbender, Star Wars, and so on. Stage 2 of the hero's journey is a refusal of the call to adventure. It's where your main character has been prompted to begin the quest that will frame the entirety of your narrative. And in stage 2, for whatever reason, the protagonist decides that the quest is not one for them. Oftentimes, this is because of the character's major flaw. And it's only going into stage 3 that the character undergoes an arc, overcomes the flaw, and embarks on their journey. Now, I'm not necessarily saying that Death Note is an example of this structure, but it does have its refusal of the call moment. And it's through that moment that we see Light's arc of episode 1. It takes place right after his second use of the Death Note, where he killed off a biker who was harassing an innocent woman on the street. Light hobbles through the rain, having a small break down because of what he did. That regret and fear I referred to earlier, the ones seemingly absent in light, are now bubbling to the surface. He is trepidatious over this incredible power. Is it his to control? Who is light to be the judge and arbiter of a human life? This moment of doubt is light's refusal of the call. But it only lasts an instant. Light steals his resolve and decides that he is the only one 
capable of making this choice. The world is rotten, and rotten people deserve to die. This epiphany for Light is an easy highlight of the episode. It's the fact that he has doubt and yet makes the choice anyway to go on this journey that makes this character so appealing. It's that choice that draws us into further episodes, knowing that we want to follow this character wherever he goes. Regardless of whether or not one agrees with Light, it's this moment that makes him an amazing protagonist. Despite this scene chronologically happening right after the one where he kills the biker, what I think was a stroke of genius was Death Note's embracing of a non-linear narrative and shifting that moment to the end of the episode. Structure is so important to storytelling, often the most important thing. By putting the confrontation with Ryuk in the middle, and thus shifting Light's epiphany to the end, we alter the structure in a way that allows for the arc to climax in a beautiful crescendo that leaves the viewer with no choice but to put on episode 2. The sequence of Light's epiphany is one that gets a viewer's heart racing and their mind excited for more. By having it go chronologically and letting it stay in the middle, you would leave yourself with a third of the episode struggling to maintain momentum. At the end of the confrontation with Ryuk, the viewer would have settled down, and at that point, the impulse and urge to continue would relax. Maybe they'd still put on the next episode, but it wouldn't be with fervor and intense desire like before. Death Note is one of the greatest anime of all time, with a story that is thrilling and intelligent, characters that overflow with cleverness and magnetism, and potent themes that continue to be the foundation of great conversation to this very day. But it wouldn't be what it was if not for a pilot that perfectly conveys the tone and expectations for the series as a whole. The reason Death Note maintains its popularity, and the reason it's such a universally great answer for how to get your friends into anime, is because of its perfect first episode. My name is Hoodie Song, this is Kato, thank you for watching. For the next month, we're kickstarting a print run of our very first community comic book anthology. If you love storytelling and have a couple bucks to spare, make sure to check out the Kato Anthology on Kickstarter. I want to thank all of the incredible patrons over at patreon.com slash KatoIT. We've been watching a lot of anime movies live on our Discord server, so if you'd like access to that, consider pledging just a single dollar. Links to everything will be in the description.